Next, we're going to be showing you uh, the, the timeline here. Um, first of all, let me show you, um, let's open this up here, a project where you will start a new project, you will probably see something like this, where you see a timeline and you actually don't, you see the timeline window, but you actually don't see any uh, media down here. Um, one thing they've updated in CC is it used to be you could not drag anything down into a uh, timeline when the timeline didn't exist, and there's not a timeline here right now. But now with the recent updates, they have made this where you can grab a clip and drag it down into the timeline, and it will set up your timeline. It will add a new timeline for you, and uh, will it'll do a couple things. It's going to make a new timeline. It will do the, it'll base the timeline settings off of the clip settings. <coughs> because one thing you got to realize is, uh, let me undo this. Um, with DSLR, let me show you a couple things here. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm going to select a clip, uh, DSLR footage, we've got 1920 by 1080 resolution there, and we have frame rate. Uh, you can have just a whole bunch of different combinations of, of um, attributes that belong to a clip. Uh, for example, we go to the red footage here, and click on the red footage, and this is 4K footage. This is uh, 4096 by 2160, which is... Um, it's not 4, 4K HD. 4K HD is actually a little less uh, than 4,000 pixels. And it's around like 3,800 something pixels. Um, so you can, even with red footage, you can have you can have 4K, you can have 5K, you can have 4K HD, you can have 2K, you can have 1920 by 1080, you can have 30 frames per second, you can have 24 frames per second, you can have drop frame, non-drop frame, 0 0.90 pixel aspect ratio, 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. There's just a whole bunch of different settings that you can have. Um, what I want you to notice is as I grab a, um, a DSLR clip, I'm going to drag it over here to this uh, timeline window and let go. It generates a new timeline right there. Uh, I don't want that in my folder, so I'm going to grab that and drag it outside my folder, a little bit to the left, Lego. That is now outside of my folder. Um, and this is uh, what I want you to notice here as well is when I select this timeline, look at the settings. The settings of this timeline match the settings of that clip that I put inside of it. Um, now watch this as I grab a red clip. And uh, now I can no longer drag it over here and drop it because it, a timeline now exists. So if you want to do a new timeline based on the red footage, I'm going to grab this and drag it down and drop it onto this little plus button here, onto this little document here. Drop it there and it will create a new sequence. The same thing, it'll generate a new sequence based off the red settings. I'm going to grab this, drag it out. I'm going to rename these timelines. I'm going to highlight this one, hit return, and name it Red Timeline. And I'm going to go to this one, return, and call this DSLR timeline. What I want you to notice here is um, I click on the red timeline. You notice this is a 4K timeline. Uh, I click on the DSLR. This is a uh, 1920 by 1080 timeline. So this is about half the resolution of the red timeline. Um, now, one thing that you got to know about this is if we're editing in the red timeline, and say we have somebody that brought back some DSLR footage that we need to add to our red timeline, I'm going to grab this clip, I'm going to drag it and drop it into the timeline, and watch what happens as I play through the red footage here, and I'm going to turn this down since it's red footage, i got to turn this down to half resolution, but as we play through this here, you'll notice it fits the window just fine, and as it cuts to the next clip here coming up, let me zoom up on my timeline. We're going to give you all these shortcuts in a minute. As I play through this here, press spacebar to play, and it cuts to my 1920 by 1080. Look what it does. Uh, it is putting 1920 by 1080 resolution in a 4K resolution timeline. So this is smaller. Now if we do this with the with the uh, the red footage and drag it into a smaller timeline, watch what happens here. I'm going to drag that and drop it into my DSLR timeline, and I play through. Notice it is zoomed up you're only seeing 1920 by 1080 perfectly centered here uh, in my window, in my program window. So what this has done is it's, uh, it hasn't scaled this to fit into the window yet. Um, the way you're going to do that, and we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more later as well, is you right click on the clip and you tell it to scale to the frame size. I don't have to do that to my DSLR footage because it's already, the timeline is set up for these clip settings here. So I'm going to right click on this clip and scale the frame size. It just squeezed that down as much as it needed to to fit it into this window. And this is a little wider aspect ratio, so it letterboxed it uh, to fit, fit all the pixels in this window. If I go to my red timeline and I right click and I scale the frame size here, 
it's going to up-res this, and since it's not as wide as the red footage, notice it's got letterboxes on the side as opposed to on top here, because they are two different aspect ratios. So just something that you need to be aware about, aware, aware of uh, is when you're setting up timelines. Uh, there's also a way to create a new timeline here. I'm going to get rid of these timelines for right now and show you a new way of doing a timeline. You can go down here and click New Item and do New Sequence. But if you do that, it's going to bring up a whole list of timelines and say, what settings, what settings do you want for your timeline? See, a lot of people that don't know what they're doing will just hit OK, and they get a standard definition NTSC. This is ancient right here. This NTSC window, this default, is ancient. And if you hit OK, notice that this is 720 by 480, pixel aspect ratio 0.90, uh, which is kind of a squeezed pixel aspect ratio. Uh, you grab red footage and drag and drop it into that. Uh, it's going to ask you, as long as you, if you don't have any clips in there yet, it's going to say your sequence settings do not match your clip settings. So do you want to change those settings to match your, your clip settings, or do you want to keep the existing settings of the timeline? If you say keep existing settings, look how zoomed up it is, because this is a really small resolution. If you right click and say scale to frame size, it zooms it down. you got this letterbox NTSC ancient TV looking format here that's going to be a crummy, crummy quality. It's taking the resolution, and when you export out of this, it's going to base it off of your timeline resolution, and it is going to destroy your resolution. Uh, so you do not want to do that. So what you'll want to do is one of three options when you create a new sequence. You're going to want to... Um, let me delete this sequence. You're going to want to either drag, figure out what sort of resolution you're working in. Do you want to stay in 4K? Do you want to go down to 1920 by 1080? Are you mixing formats? What are you doing? And decide what uh, what your final format's going to be. Um, if you're working in 4K the whole time, you just grab a clip, drag it down, drop it in. You got a 4K timeline. And the way to check that is to go over to the timeline, highlight it, look into your little preview area. If you don't see that preview area, pull this little arrow down and check mark preview area and it will show, okay, I've got 4K resolution here. And that's good for this red um, project that I'm working on. Because the whole red project is in 4K. There's a few DSLR shots, but we're going to up -res those. So it just really depends on what you're working in. Okay, that's how to create a timeline, is by dragging it over here to this area, or by grabbing a clip that you want, and dragging it down to this little new item icon. And that will create a timeline, but does it based off of the clip name and puts it in the same location as the clip. So I'm going to grab that, drag it out, because I want them separate from the clips. And I'm going to rename this one. We'll call this one DSLR Timeline, as we did before. And I'm going to call this one my red timeline. There we go. So we've got these two timelines, 4K and 1920 by 1080. Okay, let's go through um, our sequence settings here. So no, now, now that I've got two timelines over here, you'll notice I've got these icons here, here and here, represent the timelines here. If I close both of these, and I have no timelines there, you just simply, if you're missing a timeline, just simply go over here and double click on the icon, and it will load that timeline. And I'll load my DSLR one as well, and you'll notice I have my DSLR timeline and my red timeline right here. Uh, okay, within the timeline here, let's quickly talk about how the timeline works. Uh, first of all, l let me grab a couple clips. We're going to grab a few clips and drag in here. I'm going to grab these three clips, just drag and drop them in. No editing, just drop all my clips in. A bunch of these clips. So I've got uh, four clips inside my timeline here. Um, all right, what we've got is we've got our video layers and our audio layers. The V stands for video, the A stands for audio. This is a video track here. This is an audio track. Right now I have one video track and one audio track. We'll get into compositing later, but the way this works is whatever your, the video is, that's going to be seen is the video that's on top. If you lay, stack video on top of this, it's going to cut to that video as it plays through it. Um, it's a hierarchy. Whatever's on top will show. The audio is a little bit different. Audio channels, whatever you drop down in here, it'll play at all time. It mixes them all together. It's audio mixing. Um, okay, a couple shortcuts here within the timeline. First of all, your play and pause throughout your timeline. And whatever you play, wherever your playhead is, this is your playhead. Wherever your playhead is, it's going to display that frame up in your program monitor. Now, uh, to play, you're just going to hit spacebar. Play and spacebar again. 
pauses. Okay, um, now some other shortcuts. We've got the same up as up in our source monitor, you've got JKL. L forwards 100%, K stops, J rewinds 100%. And if you hit L or J a bunch of times, it'll go fast forward. 100%, 150, 200, 250, 300, until it maxes out. And then it will go full speed. J the same. You hit it a bunch of times, it'll rewind really fast. Hit it a bunch of times, it goes faster, K will stop. So if you're looking for some footage, uh, you can just hit JKL, rewind, uh, J to rewind, K to stop, L to forward. And you hit, a, hit J and L a bunch of times, it goes faster. And K stops. And pl uh, spacebar is just play, simple play and pause. Um, okay, a couple other shortcuts here we need to know about the timeline. And a couple of those shortcuts will be, first of all, zooming. Uh, zooming in and out. All right, we've got... Um, this little doodad right here, you can grab, and this will zoom in or out and kind of scale these clips up <coughs> or down. If you're really trying to fine-tune things and get nitpicky down with your editing, you need to be able to zoom in and out. I never used this bar, and the reason why is because I use shortcuts. Uh, the plus and minus, not on the numpad, but uh, up above, uh, on, on the main keyboard, uh, your plus will zoom in. Your minus will zoom out. You hit plus, 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 it zooms. Minus, 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 it zooms out. Zoom in, zoom out. And now, if you want to see the entire timeline all at once, every clip that's in your timeline, you hit the slash above the return key, the backslash above the return key. Hit it, and it shows everything within your window there. It'll size everything within your window into the viewable space. So plus, minus, Slash above the return key shows the entire timeline, fits it within the entire timeline there. A um, couple other things. If you want to increase your track height here, so you can, it'll actually turn these into thumbnails, uh, you can actually just go right between here. I'm going to show you some shortcuts for this as well. And grab this little section in between until it does this little double arrow. And you drag this up and it will change your track height. And it will reveal thumbnails uh, for your track. Same as audio. You come down here, you grab this and drag it down. It's going to increase track height, and it, and it reveals what are called uh, waveforms. So it reveals a waveform for your uh, or your peaking files for your uh, audio there. And this is a visual representation of what your audio is doing. And the more you pull that down, the larger it's going to get, and the more obvious it's going to get. And same as this track, and you can do it to any one of these tracks. Okay, a couple quick shortcuts here. Um, if you hover over one of these video tracks here, just into this blank area and use your mouse scroll right here in the blank area and just scroll up and down with your mouse. It'll do it automatically to that track, to that individual track. You just get it right here in this blank area, scroll up, scroll down. Get over here in the audio, scroll up, scroll down. Scroll up makes it bigger, down makes it smaller. Now, um, some shortcuts for that. You have shift plus will increase, it'll, it'll maximum, it'll take it to kind of a standard height for both video and audio tracks, and it'll do it to all of them. Um, now if you do Command or Control Plus, it'll increase uh, track height. Control or Command Minus decreases video track height. Option Plus or Minus or Alt increases audio track height. So you got to remember that. That's kind of some tricky stuff to remember there. You can either scroll over these increased track height, or you can hit Shift Plus. It'll do everything at once, your audio and video, to, to kind of a standard size. Or Shift Minus will take it down back to the regular compressed size. Uh, Command Plus will take track height up. Option Plus will take audio height up. And then if you do Minus on all those, conversely, it will uh, shrink all those tracks, respectively, with your Shift, Command, Option, Minus, and Plus, or just Minus and Plus to zoom in and zoom out. So minus and plus, zoom in and zoom out, command, option, shift, all those things do different functions. Um, a few other things here in the timeline uh, that you got to know about. We will talk about activating tracks later on as we start editing. Uh, but here with these tracks, here I'm going to do shift, minus, get everything kind of back down. Um, activating tracks. You click on any one of these tracks and it will deselect them or select them. It, this activates the tracks here. When you're doing editing, it'll decide where to send tracks based on what is activated. Uh, it'll do um, it'll do cuts 
depending on what tracks are activated uh, with your cut shortcut. We'll talk about that. We'll be getting into shortcuts with editing a little later. Right now we're just going over the basics of this timeline here and what these things do. Let's go over a couple things up here. We're going to go over, uh, first of all, let's let's bring down, you do have your marker here, same thing that you have up in the source window. You can click uh, add a marker, there's a shortcut M for marker. You'll add a marker on your timeline as opposed to your clips, or you can highlight clips and add markers on your clips as well. All right, I'm going to undo that, get rid of the marker there. Uh, a couple other things we have here, we'll talk about linking later on and unlinking, but snap tool is kind of a handy little tool to know about within your timeline here. This little magnet here, when you start, well, we're going to get into editing, show you how to navigate editing with editing here, but I'm going to grab some clips and move them apart and make a gap right there. Uh, but your snap tool, when you turn that on or off here, is going to uh, magnetize these clips. If you get them close to each other, they will stick to each other. Right now, they won't because this is kind of like free moving right now because I don't have that snap turn tool turned on. And what I've got here, if you zoom up to this now and I just try to kind of eyeball it, you'll notice I've got a couple frame gap there caused by, because I, I was not able to see that gap when I was moving it closer. If you turn the snap on, so now that's on right now, you can highlight these and the shortcut for that is S by the way, to turn that on and off. Notice when I hit S, it toggles that on and off. But I grab this and what this will do, this will magnetize it to anything anything that it gets close to, either the playhead, watch this, click, see there it's clicking to that, or close to this clip, click, there it goes, and there will be no gap there because it snapped right to the, you zoom up and notice no gap there. Um, one last thing here with the timeline that we'll go over the basics, we'll get into more timeline items later on, but just kind of the basics is you've got this little timeline display settings here. Pull this down and it has some options. Right now default is to show video thumbnails when they get large. If you want to turn those off you can uncheck that. Video keyframes we'll get into when we get into compositing. That's for turning down opacity or effects on video clips. Um, video names, it's going to show the video names right there. Audio waveform, it's showing audio waveform when they get large enough. Audio keyframes for um, manipulating audio and turning it down. Audio names, same thing, it's not showing the audio names by default. Uh, these are some general preferences of a lot of editors here. Um, clip markers, you can have a display markers or take them off. Uh, duplicate frame markers, uh, we'll talk about this later. Through edits. This is one thing that I like to have are through edits. We will discuss through edits later on, uh, but I like to have through edits turned on. It's so when you have what's what I call a redundant edit, when you have a cut where it doesn't need a cut right there. You'll notice, I, and that was Apple K by the way to cut. We'll talk about that later. But you have these little teeny arrows pointing toward each other to show that that is a redundant or a through edit, what's called a through edit. Um, right here, this is not a through edit. Look at the difference between those arrows and this right here. Um, but that does not need to be there. You can actually uh, right click on that and tell it to join through edits and join that edit that doesn't need to be there. Okay, but uh, th that's about it. That's about all I'm going to show right now with the timeline. A lot of these other features will start coming out and it will start making sense <coughs> as we uh, get into, these are just the basic timeline settings and as we start editing, um, as we start teaching editing, we'll start showing a lot more of the advanced features with the timeline functionality. So.